Okay, so page number four, let's get started. So for the mo uh, for most apps, you'll need to have a data structure to hold information about a user. Create a user struct that has properties for basic information about a user. At minimum, it should have properties to represent the user's name, age, height, weight, and activity level. You should do this by having name be a string, age and uh, uh, name be a string, age be an int, height and weight be a double, an activity level be an int that will represent a scoring of 1 to 10 of how active they are. Implement this now. Okay, how do we do this? Pretty easy. We use the keyword struct. We're going to call this user and we're going to give it the properties that they have mentioned. So var name of type string, var age of type int, var height of type double and var uh, weight again of type double and var activity level of type int fantastic so we've done that okay great now create a variable instance of user and call it your name okay well var logic that's my name um, equals user and um, use memberwise initializer to pass in information by yourself, then print out a description of the user instance using the instance's properties. Okay, so my full name is, as you guys all know, for the sake of logic, my age, 31, height in centimeters, it's 175 centimeters, weight, I think I'm about 170 pounds, and activity level, I'm gonna be generous here and say eight. <laughs> Uh, and then print out a description. So how do you do this? We go print. And what are we going to print here? We're going to print a little story. So I'm going to say my name is, and we're going to use string interpolation to say logic dot name. And my age is again, string interpolation to go logic dot age. And my um, height is again um, I'm going to use logic dot height and my weight is logic dot weight and and I might be being super generous here, but I think I am active at a level of go logic dot activity level out of 10. So let's see what that says here. My name is for the sake of logic and my age is 31. I should probably say years and my height is 175 cm and my weight is 170 pounds. Okay, let's see how that reads. My name is for the sake of logic my age is 31 years and my height is 175 centimeters and my weight is 170 pounds. And I might be being super generous here, but I think I'm active at a level of eight out of 10. Great. Okay, let's move on. Okay, in the previous app exercise, you've worked uh, with a dis uh, with distance in the fitness tracking app um, example as a simple member. However, distance can be represented using a variety of units of measurements. Create a distance struct that will represent distance in various units of measurement. At a minimum, it should have a meters property and a feet property. Create a custom initializer corresponding to each property, i.e., if you only have the two properties for meters and feet, you will have you will then have two initializers that will take in a distance in one unit of measurement and assign the correct value to both units of measurements. Okay, hint one meter equals that in feet. So how do we do this? Pretty easy. Again, we start with the struct keyword. We're gonna call this structure distance. Okay, so we've created we're gonna create two variables, var meters, and meters is gonna be of type double and var feet 
which is also of type double. Not sure what I did there. Okay, double. There we go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to initialize both of them. So we're going to initialize meters. So here's the thing, and I'm calling this meters as well, and this might get confusing a bit, but I actually want to teach you something here. Um, how when you when you have two different um, uh, two words spelled the same way but representing two different things, how you could tell them apart. I'm going to type this out. I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. Self dot meters equals meters and self dot feet equals meters times 3.28084 and we're gonna do essentially the same thing for um, for feet so we're gonna initialize feet with a with a parameter of feet and we're gonna say self dot feet equal feet hold on I'm not sure which feet this was there we go and self dot meters equals feet variable divided by three point uh, two eight zero eight four okay so what did I do here so we created two variables meters and feet um, and then we initialize meters and we initialize feet so when we initialize meters we're taking a parameter called meters and what we've done here is maybe I should rewrite this so I could show you I, uh, but essentially I said self dot meters this meters represents this meters right here so I'm saying take the meters from uh, the distance struct and give it this value of meters here it's this meters so let me go ahead and rewrite that line to show you how it's different so self dot meters uh, dot meters and here where it says meters you see that it says v v is stands for variable so it's referring to the variable but when i go equals meters here i've got two meters right so which meters am i gonna select well this one represents this but the L represents the parameter in the initializer, so I'm obviously going to select this. So I'm taking whatever value is uh, being input in the parameter here, and I'm assigning it to the value here. And then I'm saying take feet, and then assign it the value of meters, which is this, and now this value is whatever this was, times 3.28084. And essentially did the same thing for feet, but in reverse. Okay, so um, that's done. It says now create now create an instance of distance called mile so var mile equals distance um, and uh, use the initializer for meters to set a distance to 1600 so meters we're gonna set it at 1600 print out the property for feet to verify that it is equal to 5249 so we're gonna print mile dot feet and it should print this number right here if we did it correctly and you bet we did it correctly awesome now create another distance uh, another instance of distance and give it some other distance okay so I'm gonna go um, uh, var some other distance equals distance and, sure, uh, and give it some other distance this time we're gonna give it a value in feet right I'm gonna say I don't know 8,000 feet and I'm gonna print out some other distance both in feet and in meters so in feet obviously in feet it should say 8000 because that's already said but if i do if i do um meters it should be the equivalent of six eight thousand feet and the equivalent of eight thousand feet is apparently 2438 meters now we know all right moving on to the next page page five all right, page five. So let's have a look. A book struct has been created for you below. Okay, so they've already created a book struct for us. Add an instance method on book called description that will print out facts about the book and create an instance of book and call this method uh, on that uh, instance. Okay, so how do you do that? So now we're gonna create a function and functions inside structures or classes are called methods. So func description 
description. Did I spell that right? Description. There we go. And um, and description is gonna print out something. So what what are we printing here? Um, then create an instance uh, an instance uh, on book called description that will print out facts. Oh, so we're just printing out facts. Okay, so what are we printing here? Printing um, the book, and we're gonna use string interpolation title um was written by i love this part i'm like creating a story here uh author so by the way i'm saying title author and the reason i'm not saying book dot title or book dot author is because i'm still inside the structure so obviously this function has a scope that belongs to the structure uh it's not a global scope so obviously all i have to do is say title because the only other variables in this scope is um is title uh, an author and page and, and uh, price okay so the book um, was written by this author and has a whopping I think that's how you spell whopping um, I'm gonna say pages has um, pages and currently goes for the amazing price of and we're gonna say price okay let's go ahead and uh, so and then create an instance of book and uh, call this method okay so we're gonna call um, var uh, some book equals book equals book and we're going to initialize it for title i'm going to say the profit uh author jabron khalil jabron by the way amazing book if you ever get a chance to read it it'll change your life it's a tiny book i'm not sure how many pages but i'm going to go 150 price everything in my world cost 19.99 so i'm going to stick with 19.99 and then we're going to uh, go some book dot we're gonna call up the method description and let's see what it looks like the book the prophet was written by Gibran Khalil Gibran and has a whopping 150 pages and currently goes for the amazing price of 1999 all right awesome that worked okay moving on a post struct has been created for you below representing a generic social media post add a mutating method on post called like that will increment likes by one then create an instance of post and call, and call like on it. Print uh, print out the likes property before and after calling uh, the method to see whether or not the value was incremented. Okay, that's easy enough. Let's see how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna create another uh, function called like. Okay. However, it's a mutating function. So a mutating function is. Fun. look at that um, a mutating function is a function that can essentially modify okay so all you have to do is type mutating beforehand and that's a swift keyword and what we want to do is all we're doing is we're incrementing likes by one so that's all we're doing so uh, we're gonna create a instance of post we're gonna call it some post equals post sorry post and message I'm gonna say some message and likes I'm gonna give a four likes and number of comments zero comments although you guys should comment on all my videos um, and like all my videos and subscribe as well um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the like function so some post no not some book some post dot like um, hold on a sec. So we're gonna uh, print. Uh, it said before and after, right? So print some post dot likes. So here it should print. It should print four because currently it has four. And then I run the function, which should increment it. And I'm gonna print uh, some post dot likes again, and it should read five there we go it does that works so it had four posts i ran the i ran the function 
it changed, it incremented the post by one, printed it again, and now it's five. Fantastic. Okay, moving on to the next page. Okay, page six. Let's have a look. So, a running workout struct has been created for you below. Add a method of um, add a method on running work workout called post workout stats that prints out the details of the run. Then create an instance of running workout and call a uh, post workout stat. All right, that's pretty easy. Well, how do we do that? Pretty pretty easy. So we just go func uh, post work uh, workout stats and this is just a function and we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, print out the stats so we're gonna go ahead and print out the stats so I'm gonna print uh, we're gonna print out the stats uh, we've got distance so we're got uh, let's say the distance was we're gonna go distance um, and then you know what I'm gonna do them all in new lines so backward slash if you're not aware just says new line I'll show you how that looks the time was time backward slash n the elevation was there we go so if I print this out so I'm going to create a um, instance of running workout. So var sum workout equals running workout. And it's an instance. So we're going to give it a distance of 10 kilometers, say 55 minutes, elevation of um, 22. Um, and we're going to go sum workout dot post workout stat. That's the method that we're going to call and it should print um, the distance was 10, the time was 55, the elevation was 22, and um, I put a space here, that's why, and I'm gonna put a space here just so that looks better. There we go, that looks much better. All right, moving on. A step struct has been created for you below representing the day's step tracking data. Um, it has the goal um, number of steps for the day and the number of uh, steps taken so far create a method of steps called take step that increments the value of steps by one then create an instance of steps and call take step print the value of instance steps property before and after the method okay that's pretty easy essentially that's a mutating uh, function mainly because we have to increment something so the function has to um, um, change the value of a variable of a property therefore it has to be mutating so mutating uh, funk and it takes step that's what they want us to call it okay and all it's gonna do is gonna take steps and it's gonna increment it by one and um, that's essentially it so we're gonna print so I'm gonna we're gonna print this but we have to create an instance first so I'm gonna go var um, some workout with steps I know that's a mouthful equals steps and we're gonna initialize it steps let's say I did 582 steps and my goal is 10,000 by the way um, that underscore just um, the underscore is ignored by Swift uh, that just makes it easier for human beings to read so I like to always um, um, order my numbers um, um, organize my numbers using the underscore just for readability's sake. So we're gonna go ahead and print some workout with steps dot um, dot steps and it should say 582 and I'm gonna go there we go it says 582 right here at the bottom and I'm gonna go some workout steps dot and I'm gonna call up the function take step and I'm gonna print essentially the same thing dot steps and it should um, it should be 583 give it a second and 583 so 582 here and I called up the function take step incremented by one and now it's 583 fantastic all right moving on to the next page